Hi, my name's Michael and uh, I'm here today to help you make a, uh, a, a diamond kite. Now, it, this takes a little bit of a process and it can be a great family family thing to do together because um, you do need a bit of help from time to time, especially if you're a younger person. And, uh, and also, parents can get involved in, in helping you to, to make a kite. Now, let's not just leave it to the young people to fly this kite because uh, I'm sure, like me, it can be a lot of fun to fly kites and I love flying any sort of kite in any weather and it can be it can be a good time. But before we get going, let's have a quick look at the materials that we'll need to get our kite going. We'll need uh, two pieces of dowel and I've chosen to use six millimeter dowel and this piece is uh, 65 centimeters long and I've also chosen to use a thinner dowel which is four millimeters and that's 55 centimeters long. So that's going to make the frame of our kite. I'll need a saw or a hacksaw at some stages to, to help with the process. I'll need a ball of string. I'll need a ruler to make some uh, measurements and some markings and a pencil. We'll be using uh, some scissors to do some cutting to, so we can cut out our, our sail to make the right shape. So always be careful with scissors because they, they are sharp. Uh, we need some sticky tape to, uh, to stick our kite together and make things work. And right at the end, we'll need a, a darning needle. And I often, uh, I often keep my darning needle in a cork so it protects the point and it means I don't lose it. The last thing that we need is the sail material. And that's that piece of brown paper underneath all these objects here. Uh, brown paper is good fun process. You can decorate it with uh, textures and paints and all sorts of things. But you can also use some of that fantastic wrapping paper which can be holographic and, and colourful and things. And I'm sure you can source all sorts of things. But the heavier the paper or the sail, the more wind your kite will need to fly. So we need to think about that. And at the end, there's all sorts of ways of doing a tail for your kite and you can cut, cut up some strips of brown paper or you can use some lovely ribbons, but that's for you to explore. So these are the materials that we need to have together to get our kite to fly. Okay, so now we've had a look at the materials and let's start the step-by-step -step process of making our kite. So here's our six millimeter piece of dowel and the four millimeter piece of dowel that we talked about. And the first thing we need to do is to mark the center point on the spreader. Okay, so this is 55 centimetres, so centre is 27 and a half, so I'm using a texture to make a nice dark point, so I can see that. Now, the diamond kite that we're going to make, uh, the first thing is, is to make a cross frame. Now, you can read all sorts of books that tells you that you need to have certain ratios to make the kite fly and work well, but really, you can make any sort of shape and get it to fly. It's about the angle of attack and the balance from the tail's point of view. Now, you can choose just about anywhere to place this spreader on the kite, but if you stick to something that is a bit like a standard cross, like this one, you'll find that it is a little easier to, um, to get this kite to fly. So I guess that's about a quarter of the way down the spine, which is the six millimeter piece of dowel. And, uh, and we're using dowel today, but, uh, but, but two and a half thousand years ago in China, they used to use bamboo to, uh, to make the frames of their kite because it was readily available. But today, the local hardware shop, and we can get down there and buy some, uh, some dowel. And what we're gonna need now is some string. And I'm gonna teach you a knot. And here's the, uh, here's the first bit of this knot. I'm just gonna tie a very simple thumb knot in the end of this string. So that's just an, just an overhand knot, just a very simple knot. And now I'm going to pass the string around our dowel and it's going to end up being a slip knot. So let's get this organized. So here's the, here's the knotted end and, and if I now tie another simple thumb knot around this long piece of string here, pull that through nice and tight when I pull up on that, it slides down to the dowel and holds fast. So let's put our, our, our cross back together again. So I think I want it somewhere about here. So I'm just gonna move that up a little bit. Now, what we've gotta do is lash these two sticks together. So this gets a little bit tricky, but because we've got our, our slip knot at this point here, I'm gonna go wind, winding around the diagonal with my piece of string, round and round. So I think I've gone around about three or four times that way. And now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna wind it round the other way. 
And what this is doing is holding these two sticks together. So I hope that seems to be pretty secure now. And so now I need to finish off the string. So you could tie any sort of simple knot, but I like to try and do a hitch at that point there and around and through the hole again to that point there and around again for good luck. And sometimes if you have the time and the patience, it's a good idea to put a spot of glue at that point and that will fasten everything at this place here so that it won't slip. Just trim off that, um, that bit of string there. Now, what we're going to do is, is, is have a string line that's going to go around the outside of our kite here. So in order to do that, hopefully you might have somewhere around at home where you've got a vise, because what we need to do is we need to put our frame in the vise, holding that there, and a hacksaw. Now you don't have to actually use the whole hacksaw, you can get away with a blade, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a slight groove in the top, excuse the noise, in the top. And I'm going to turn this around and again I'm going to get the groove and I want it again to be parallel with the one at the bottom so we're going to have a go at sawing this one gently and if you're a young person it's a good idea to get mum and dad to give you a hand at this point so we don't end up hurting ourselves and you know these days with materials that are available there's lots of other materials we can use apart from Dow. There's, um, there's fiberglass and there's all sorts of fittings and things for the fiberglass because all, the, all of the modern kites have got uh, um, fantastic fittings that they make for them whereas we're doing a traditional kite. Traditional um, kites have been around for two and a half thousand years um, I was at a festival in Malaysia once and watched uh, two gentlemen take four days together to build one of their kites in Malaysia. And you know, the term for kite in, uh, in Malaysian is wow. And at the end of the, uh, the four days when they make their kites, they do look wow. They look fantastic. Um, the symbol on a, on a Malaysian airline symbol is, uh, is for a kite as well, and it's a wow. So now we've got our, um, our little slits in the edge, and you're probably saying, why are we going to so much trouble for that? Well, what we need to do is we need to put a string around the outside of this, uh, of this frame so that we can attach the sail to it, okay? So we've got our, uh, our frame done, and we've got the little slits in each corner. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to bring on a piece of paper here, a big bit of brown paper, and uh, we're going to use a bit of brown paper for a sail. Now you can use all sorts of things. You can go down to the newsagent and use nice decorative uh, wrapping paper, which can be quite bright and colourful, and uh, there's lots of things. You can use tissue paper, but tissue paper is very light. Now, there we go. So, now we've got our, uh, our frame sitting on the, on the kite here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a mark at the points of the frame. Okay, so now that's, uh, that's marked our piece of paper here of, uh, of, where the, um, of where the kite frame can fit back in afterwards. So what I'm going to do now is, um, is take a a long ruler because I think I'll need one a bit longer than the one that I had on the bench there and we're going to mark out our kite. If you're making one of these for the first time at home, what I think would be a great idea is to, uh, to ask either your parents or your grandparents their experiences of flying kites because 
the joy and the fun of flying kites is terrific. I made just a very simple diamond kite the other day and I've made lots over my time. And, uh, and when I went down to the park to fly it, just to test fly it, to see what it was like, it certainly brought a smile to my face. It's, um, it is a joyous way to, uh, to enjoy the wind. And I think these days it's really important to, to, uh, to play with the wind and, uh, and enjoy the wind as much as possible. Um, it's one of our natural elements. Now, so this is, uh, this is our kite and it's all set up here nicely. So that's, uh, that's going to be our end shape. But in order to make this, uh, this all fit together, what I'm going to do is, is cut around the edge of our shape now, leaving about two and a half centimetres around the edge. Now you don't have to be super accurate at this point because we've got a nice line to fold to. So I'm going to quickly cut around here and see how we go. So as I'm doing this, I've got a story to tell. In Japan, they have 26 different traditional shapes that they make. And depending on the, uh, the, the region that you live in, like the state in Australia or the region in, in Japan, that makes the, uh, the kind of shape that you would make for your kite. So if you go to a kite festival in Japan and you see somebody flying a rectangular kite, you can tell whereabouts they grew up from and whereabouts they live. And the Japanese shapes are absolutely amazing. And again, the Japanese use lots and lots of bamboo because quite often their shapes are quite intricate and they need lots of bowing and bending and things. So here's our, here's our diamond kite again now with our lines drawn on it. And what I'm going to do now before we start the important process, which is decorating our kite, is I'm going to fold along these lines. Now, to do that the easiest way possible, or well, this is what I found, this is my tip, is if you, if you make a fold in the middle here where the, where the, between these two points, so if I'm just going to fold a little bit there and I know I'm along the line, now if I come back to this edge and fold and then go across to this side, you'll find that that goes fairly straight. Sometimes it's really hard to work your way along. So again, in the middle, make a fold on the line and then take it to the end and fold it down that side and fold it down this side, turn it round, fold in the middle Does anybody know anything about Australian kite flying and the tradition of the box kite? Lawrence Hargraves, who lived in Sydney, down at Rose Bay, designed and built a box kite because he was watching all the people around the world trying to create an aeroplane. And he said, if I use a kite to lift me off the ground, maybe that will help us develop an aeroplane that would work. And lo and behold, he used three big box kites to lift himself off the ground, sent that information around the world in a science journal, and then the Wright brothers used some of that information to make their first aeroplane that actually flew and got off the ground. So dear old Lawrence Hargraves, our box kite specialist, is a very important part of aviation. So I've flipped over my kite now and here's the surface area that we want to decorate. So if I reach for some textures, so we can now use the textures to decorate our kite or we could use paints or we could use crayons or we could put stickers on our kite. So there's lots of different ways to, uh, to decorate our kite. And that's the fun part. So spend some time with uh, maybe your brother or sister or your mum and dad and see what designs you can come up with to, uh, to decorate your kite. But we're going to move on to, uh, to our kite because there's lots of things to do. You can do the decorating by yourself. Now, here's the next tricky bit. We need to attach a string all the way around the outside of this, uh, of this kite. So I'm just going to loosely grab the right amount or a bit too much string actually that I'll need. And one more thing that I need to do just before we start this is I'll come back to my hacksaw and I'm just going to put at the bottom of the spine here, I'm just going to create a little bit of a groove which is where we're going to start and stop this process. Okay, so the first thing we need to do 
is to tie what I call a stopper knot in the end of the string. So that's just a simple overhand knot to use as a stopper knot for this string. The next thing that we need to do is we need to take, this gets a little bit fiddly here, I'm, so here's my, here's my stopper knot and I'm going around the main string which is running through this way and I'm, going to part, and I'm just going to now create another overhand knot. I hope this might come out. So, and you can see that the main line is running through that overhand knot, but if I pull that now tight around the main line, what I create is a slip knot. So that can slide backwards and forwards. So if I place that now over the base of the spine here and pull it up nice and tight, it bites in nice and firmly at that point. And that's the knot we're going to use in a number of places throughout this, this project. Now, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to follow the string around and I'm going to pop it in the, the groove that we put on the end of, of that rod come around to the groove on the end of this rod that we put it into, a groove on the end of this one, and then down to the bottom. And what I need to do, sometimes it's handy to have a second set of hands here. There we go. So I'm making this as square as I can just by the eye. And then I'm going to tie this off at the bottom here. with a few knots. I know this is tricky. Okay, so how are we looking? That's looking pretty good and it's fairly square, I think. I'm fairly happy with that. So I need to, uh, I need to find my scissors just to trim that off. Whoops. And one of the things I do notice is that it's sometimes these strings can pop out of these end points. So if we just use a little bit of tape and we tape that onto the end there, that's going to hold that string at that point. So we'll do that at these few points here. How are we looking? That's pretty good, and I think it should be pretty secure down the bottom here, but maybe we'll just put a bit of tape on that one as well. There we go. Now, don't forget we've decorated this side of our kite, so this is where all our decorations are, and then if we turn this over and we pop our, our kite frame back in here, oh, hang on, one step I forgot. We just need to cut these corners off. Just imagine if you were making the largest kite in the world, which is made by a very good friend of mine in New Zealand, Peter Lin. It's a soft kite and it's meters and meters and meters by meters and meters and meters. It's huge. It takes men about six months to build that kite and it is a lot of work. And there's certainly times when you do forget the steps. Now, here's our kite that fits back inside our, um, our frame here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to simply get my sticky tape back here. We're going to simply stick this around the edge. So this is a framed kite. So it has, uh, it has a sail, which is what we've decorated. It also has a frame. The largest kite in the world is a soft kite. So it's what we might term a parafoil. And the parafoils are all sewn up with ripstop nylon. And uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of sewing and a lot of thought because quite often those kites are in the shape of something. And years and years and years ago, the, the first largest kite in the world built, by, built in New Zealand was in the shape of an octopus. But these days it's moved through to a trilobite. And now the one that they're making these days is what they call a flag kite. And it's, um, 
it's it's like a it's like a big pillow actually. That's quite an unusual shape. But uh, but there's also another one, um, which is in the shape of a stingray. Now we've actually now done the sail and the frame of our diamond kite. So we've got our decoration on this side. We've got the frame on the back. And there's, uh, there's basically two more or three more things that we need to do for our kite. One is a big long tail for balance. And the other one is a point to attach the string to our kite. Now, the, the, the rods are crossing at this point here. And the, the string that we use on the kite is called a bridle, like on a horse. And the string for the bridle starts at this point, goes up to a point here and then down to the bottom. So it will go around about um, oh, two thirds of the way towards the top. So they're about there and coming down, here's the bottom of our kite. So it's about here again. It doesn't have to be in a specific spot, but it needs to be close. And I'm just going to put a bit of sticky tape at these two points here to again, just to strengthen the paper. Now the bridle, I need some more string. It starts at this point, goes up to about here, comes down to here, and if in doubt, always make the string a bit longer. Now, the other thing that we'll need is a, is a darning needle. So this is quite a, uh, quite a stiff, but a bluntish sort of needle. And if I thread my string on that point, and what I'm gonna do is <coughs> poke the string through, right next to the spine of this kite bring it around to the back, come out the other side of the, the spine, pull that string through, come down to the bottom point here, poke it down one side of the spine, bring it around and then back up the other side. Pop my needle back in the cork so I don't lose it or hurt myself. And here's my, my simple knot again. It's the same knot I've been using the whole time. A stopper knot in the end. Around, around this one, creating one more knot. Pull it up tight, pull that one tight to the spine. Same again down the bottom here. I tell you what, my time over playing with kites, I've learned lots and lots of different knots, but I do use this one a lot. Um, it's kind of useful for lots of things. Tying it around. Pull it tight. Now, here's the trick. I talked before about the angle of attack. So, so when the wind blows, it blows parallel to the ground and we need a kite to be at an angle to the wind so that when the wind hits it, it gets deflected to the ground and then the kite will fly. If it's flat to the wind, when the wind pushes against the kite, it pushes it backwards. Okay, if it's too far over, then it won't have enough power to make the kite lift. So the angle that your kite flies is really important. Now, this is how we do it. We've got our bridle here, and if I pick it up, and what's a relief is, see how it's nicely balanced? It's not falling off to one side, it's nicely balanced. So that means it must be symmetrical and balanced at this point. But now I move my fingers along this string until the tail of the kite is touching the the, the workbench here and the nose is up by about 10 or 15 degrees. So it might be a bit hard to see from the video, but the tail is just touching the workbench and this one is up off the, off the front of the kite. So at that point there where I was holding it on the bridle, I tie a very simple loop and that's where at that loop there is where we're going to attach the string. Okay, so that's that done. The last thing that we need is tails on the bottom of our kite. So they hang off the bottom of the spine for decoration. So we're going to choose a couple of uh, tails here. And you can use all sorts of things for tails. You can use uh, material, you can use the scrap pieces of paper. And if we pop them around the back of the spine and put our pull our tails through so it's attached to the bottom of our kite and now we've got our diamond kite. So the bridle, the sail, the frame and the tail and now we can go out and fly our kite and have some fun. Okay, so now we're going to have a go at flying our, uh, our diamond kite that we made with the brown paper and tails 
And, uh, and what we're going to do slowly is, is, is lift up the kite with our, with our right hand and uh, let it catch a bit of the wind. It looks like it's doing okay. And now if we let out a bit of string slowly, the tail is taking the effect of balancing our kite and it will shake a little bit like it's doing. And there we go. Let's, oh, I, think it's, I think it's working okay if you ask me. Let's have some fun.